It's still summer, but a chilly wind and the cold sting of raindrops reminds us that autumn is close at hand. This change of seasons is also a reminder to a roving band of aviators. For the past nine months, the crew of an airship owned by Britain's lightship group has been traversing Europe, displaying the banner of its current client. Summer is ending, and today, so is this contract. In the next 70 hours, the airship needs to be flown back to its home base in Britain, Hapney Green Airfield in the West Midlands. There, in a frantic overnight session, it must be stripped of its decals, refurnished with the banner of its new sponsors, then flown to Farnborough in time for the opening of the first day of the air show. Before heading home, the airship will fly over Hanover one last time. But then, the boys of the lightship group will embark on a marathon journey across northern Europe, a race in which the main competitors are time and nature, a challenge that is just a day in the life for the crew of an airship. A day in the life of an airship crewman. A little bit more than just a day. Three days crammed into one more life. As the airship begins its last flight over Hanover, the ground crew prepares for the journey home. At three o'clock, the airship will return to Hanover Airport. Here it will quickly be refueled, and a fresh pilot will jump aboard. I just want to know if my flight plan has been accepted by Brussels. It is. Oh, good. Back good. at the Met Office, pilot and, Mike uh, Naranzik gets final approval for his flight plan. Mike is an Australian who's been flying for the lightship group for 10 years. He's flown airships in Australia, America, and Europe. But today, he faces one of his most challenging journeys. All the, uh, all the flight plans have to go out to, uh, to Brussels. And we've had to put in a, an IFR flight plan for our return trip because it's basically at night time. Back at the airfield, the crew gathers canisters of helium, the lifeblood of an airship. It's an airship or not? An airship. Back yeah. inside, Mike takes one last it's look at the weather. The procedure the is reminiscent more airport. of a George Orwell novel than an airport met office. Uh, just now, oh, yeah, 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 the yes. yeah. Track will take me from uh, Hanover to direct to Ostend, and we will track uh, south of Rotterdam. And Mike's greatest concern is the strong winds whipping across northern Europe. If this weather pattern keeps up, Mike faces the daunting task of fighting headwinds for the entire journey. For an airship pilot, this upstream battle means less speed and more fuel. Okay, sir, I understand that. For me, this is okay. Uh, I have the tap and the meter, and uh, I appreciate uh, Thank you very much. Yes. That's very good. Thank you, Sean. Cheers. Cheers. Bye-bye. As the airship heads back to Hanover Airport, Mike receives an ominous weather report. Just received a, a page from Antwerp and uh, from our ground crew there, the ones that we're using for the staging, and they're um, telling me that the wind at the ground at uh, Antwerp Hotel is 20 gusting 25 with a 600-foot cloud base. <laughs> it pretty much confirms what, uh, what all of our metars and, and the taps are indicating, I suppose. What does that mean for anyone? Um, well, it's... Uh, I'm going to ring Birmingham um, and speak to, uh, to our Met station, uh, the Met forecasting people in Birmingham. The uh, problem being is that uh, I need to find out uh, if this low is, is filling or whether it's uh, moving or, or what its rate is. Um, obviously, the language barrier is a bit of a problem. I mean, if we've got winds here of 15 gusting 25 and 30 knots, and, uh, and we're an airship that only does 40 knots, so 
Um, we've got to try and get it right. That's an important one. Uh, and at this stage, I, I think it's, it's, it's okay for us to get airborne and, and to go. It's just going to be very, very slow and probably miserable for the first eight hours. <laughs> During the approach, the airship is thrashed by the unforgiving autumn winds. On an airship, the landing gear consists of two ropes and some skillful timing on the part of the ground crew. If the wind does catch and starts pushing it towards you, you, you going to be flat out getting out of the way of it so um, yeah just if you make your way down there just make sure you're well outside the swing so be careful that the props are turning due to the high winds three men are assigned to each landing line directing the operation is crew chief Richard Penny Richard a native of southern England is one of the crew's most experienced veterans while the airship is on the ground he directs the entire operation through a series of arm motions doing now is, uh, is basically rebalancing the ship according to what the pilot requires. Um, obviously during the uh, transit uh, to Ostend we're, um, we're basically going to be burning a hell of a lot of fuel with these headwinds um, but also we might encounter uh, heavy rain and then dry spells as well so this all has to um, be taken into account by the pilot and he has to estimate as to how much weight he's going to lose on the way so that when he does land at Ostend he doesn't become too light and he cannot come down to the ground. So uh, it's all a, a matter of uh, judgment um, and a little mathematics that come into it but Richard's uh, ballasted it and soon we'll be on our way. Does the wind ever win? Never. Not with three of us on the line anyway. <laughs> The airship has been dampened by rain and is heavily laden with fuel. Growling to full power, the two small engines struggle under the added weight. Until finally, at 15 minutes after three, Mike and his airship take to the sky. For Mike, the long journey won't be easy. Because weight limitations won't allow him to bring a co-pilot, Mike will be his own navigator. Flying an airship takes a physical toll. Altitude is controlled by a set of wheels on either side of his seat, and rudder pedals are used for steering. Just keeping the airship straight and level is an aerobic workout, and as Mike embarks on the long journey westward, the boys on the ground must race to catch him. At the moment, what we'll be doing is uh, just packing the remainder of the uh, stuff up into the vehicles uh, and uh, setting sail basically on the autobahns. But we will, do have to have uh, one stop first, uh, which is a, a quick fuel stop at the Arrow station just outside. So uh, let's make haste. By four o'clock, the crew are on their way out of Hanover in two four-by-fours and a van. As they head toward the Autobahn, it's important that the caravan stick together. <laughs> yeah, mobile one, torch to, the, torch to the blimp. We've all got these, we've all got CVs where we talk to each other. As, as you said, we were staying in order. That's mobile one, this is mobile three, that's mobile four. So we all stay in touch. He gives us the directions and we follow it like that. Mobile One is a Land Rover driven by crew chief Richard Penny. Sitting next to Richard is Matt Crossland, who's training to become a crew chief. Matt does most of the talking to the airship. The actual gauge is a bit, reading a bit low and it's faulty. So, what is it under reading? Mike has just called Mobile One to say that his gauges are indicating less fuel than anticipated. Sitting in the back seat of the Land Rover is another airship pilot, Tony Allen. 
If Mike has any problems related to flying, then he talks directly to Tony. With Mike alone in the air, Tony becomes a sort of long-distance co-pilot. In this case, he's able to tell Mike that his fuel gauges have recently been under-reading. As feared, the strong headwinds are already causing problems. The airship is burning through the fuel, and Mike thinks he may need to make a pit stop before the sun goes down. Why you got that, Mike? Um, we're just getting onto the uh, autobahn now on the main two uh, E30, and uh, I'll have a good map to see what uh, what we com can come up with. Yeah. On reaching the autobahn, the boys in the caravan face a problem of their own: traffic. As five o'clock approaches, Matt receives another call from Mike. Negative, Mike. It's going very slow down here. While the caravan sits in traffic, Mike pushes even further ahead of his ground crew. In order to land, the crew must be ahead of Mike so they have time to drive to an airfield and set up. With Mike burning through his fuel supply, the endless line of cars is an unwelcome sight. Roger. Quarter after five, Mike is looking for alternative airfields so he can refuel before sundown. Mike's aviation maps highlight all possible landing areas, from large airports to small unpaved glider fields. But Mike can't simply land wherever he wants. The airship takes the most direct course to England. The roads do not. The airfield must be close enough to the caravan so the boys on the ground have time to set up for the landing. But right now, the main problem is still the traffic. Although the caravan is well clear of Hanover, a seemingly endless stream of roadworks means slow going. Location. Um, we're still very slow down here on the traffic. Uh, we're at Wunsdorf, Wunsdorf. I understand uh, you're just at that turn up at Wunsdorf, is that correct? Hey, Sam. I won't be laughing for you out of that traffic then, by the sound of it. Okay, then. Uh... Matt, uh, well done, and I'll speak to you on the hour. Roger, Mike, and um, as far as refueling goes, how does uh, Munster, Osnabrück 